Fairtrade aims to decrease the gap in the lifestyles of families in the north and south. What you eat and drink can radically change the standard of living of families in the south and how they see their future. This is 17-year-old Kasturi, the youngest daughter of the Shangmugian family. For the last few weeks, she's been getting up quite early. They have an important exam next week. I get up at uh, 4 o'clock and start learning till 6.30 because uh, I don't want to fail in my exams. Kasturi's family has lived on the Chamraj tea estate for over 20 years. Mother Supalakshmi works as a tea picker and father Shagmugian as a watchman. Every morning the family busily gets everything done before leaving for work and school. Supalakshmi is one of the 1,000 workers who lives with her family on the estate. <laughs> Kasturi loves to chat and joke around with her friends, but when it comes to her studies, she's very serious. High quality education in English is provided by the estate and supported through fair trade money. Like many other pupils, Kasturi is the first generation in her family to go to school. Because my parents are illiterate, they, they are uh, suffering in the deep uh, pushes. So I know, uh, I know the importance of education. I want to develop myself and uh, I want to come forward. By law, tea estates are obliged to provide primary education. The Chamraj estate has facilitated education up to university level. Fair trade money is used to pay the teacher's salaries and guarantees that the parents only pay a small school fee. Mother Supalakshmi is very proud of Kasturi and her elder sister Kashalia. <laughs> The Chamraj estate is located in the Nilgiris, a mountain range in the south of India. The tea produced on the estate has acquired the Fair Trade Certification Mark and 50% of their production is organic. Based on the amount of fair trade tea sold, a fair trade premium is received by the workers to be used for community projects. Only 5% of the estate's tea is sold under fair trade terms. The workers would like to have all their tea sold as fair trade tea, as Rajmani explains. <laughs> Subramani and Savitri are two of the 12 members of the democratically elected joint body that decides on behalf of the workers on the spending of the fair trade premium. They organize regular meetings to talk about the advantages of fair trade and discuss how the premium should be spent. These are plans for the future, but a lot has already been achieved with the fair trade premium money. Mm. One of the main achievements of the fair trade premium is the pension scheme. Widow Samati is retired. She was a tea picker for 36 years and lives with her son and his family. Samati is no longer a financial burden for her children. 
For over a year, fair trade premium money has been reserved for a housing scheme for pensioners. Money is deposited annually in individual accounts so that the workers can buy land and build a house when they retire. The Chamraj Tea Estate has a long history of social involvement with its workers. It started the school, hostels for students, a hospital and an orphanage, not only for the workers of the estate but also for the surrounding area. Mr Pinto is the director of the estate. The amount of money which we use from fair trade funds, um, I would say is close to about 30% of our total social uh, service expenditure. We have a lot of projects in mind where we don't have enough money. Fair trade money will help us achieve all this. Now we are giving only subsidy for housing. I can come out with housing projects. Now presently we have only a male doctor and a lady doctor. I can get in specialists here. I can have a surgeon, a dentist who keep on visiting the hospital. The joint body recently decided to pay the salary of a male doctor in the hospital. Kasturi is doing her physics test. Competition for higher studies is fierce in India. Like her sister Kashalia, Kasturi wants to go to college. Kasturi scored 99 out of 100 in her last mathematics test. In this test, she hopes to do even better. Today, I uh, wrote better. I think I'll take you a good marks in this exam. Our correspondent, Danny Schreiner, is in Buenos Aires, which tells me why the countries were setting up the new institution. Back at home, Kasturi takes a well-deserved rest after a long day. Super Lakshmi feels proud. Her daughters will be able to lead a life she could never have imagined possible. I like to become a civil engineer, and uh, after getting a good job, I like to look after my parents well.